Hello and welcome to the special combo edition of The Hub, the Hymns Unlimited broadcast with yours truly, Atani. After 10 edifying editions, I get to bring you a recap of two of these. Um, in this special combo edition, you are going to enjoy a recap of some of our reflections and hymns and interactions. So stay tracked in, call a friend to tell another friend, get your family members together and let's watch this special combo episode together. Cheers. Shout. 
Wow. Let the lower lights be burning. Send a gleam across the way. Some poor, fainting, struggling seaman. You may rescue. You may save. Welcome back to The Hub, the Hins Unlimited broadcast with Atani. And today is such a special edition, this fifth edition. I'm blessed to have Pastor Sepenya with me and Minister Eugene Zuta. And we are reflecting on these powerful hymns, a number of them written centuries ago, to the glory of God. Mr. Zuta has had to step out quickly to attend to, you know, what Skonti and I call pharaoh duties. <laughs> and he'll be hopefully back soon before I, I draw the curtain on today's um, hub broadcast. But let me go to Pastor Sepenya. We've had three powerful hymns. The first one, Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory, which you had the privilege of leading with Eugene Zuta. So tell me, um, what, do you, what, what are your reflections on that hymn, Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory? What are your reflections on that hymn? My... <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, my eyes have seen the glory, as you, you put it earlier. Mm. There's something that we definitely have seen that is keeping mm. us, you know, where we are mm. amidst all the pleasures in this world, pleasures in quotes, you know, that is keeping us focused on the one who called us, mm. the one who has called us, and um, making us willing to deny ourselves and to take up our crosses, you know, and to look forward, to be focused, mm. looking up onto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith alone. There's some experience that we have had, or I have had, I know my brother Eugene has also had, coming to know the Lord and being willing to live the rest of our lives in honor of him, bringing glory to him in everything that we do. And so that is basically, again, the story of salvation. There's no magic to it. He, he died on the cross. He shed his blood to wash our sins away, even mm. sins that we are yet to commit, which we are trusting by the grace of God and with the help of our helper, the Holy Spirit, mm. you know, not to stray into. Yes. And so it is that glory of God. The Bible says that for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Mm. And it's the blood of Jesus that washes away that sin and brings back that glory, that glory that gives us favor before men, before God, opens doors and causes us to walk through with ease when mm. men struggle. Mm. And so that glory is what we, our eyes are focused on. We look forward to the coming of the Lord. And every day as we live, he's made it so easy. He's made it easy. The Christian walk, it's easy with our help at the Holy Spirit. I, I, I would just like to encourage everybody who's listening mm. and watching me this morning that if you're a Christian, it's not enough to remain a baby Christian. It's not enough to remain at that place of salvation. But there's the need to be friends with the Holy Spirit. There's the need to grow in him. Mm. Being filled with the Spirit, that's what the Scripture says. Continually filled, overflowing, saturated. You know, he shows you the way. Turn left, turn right. Touch this, don't touch this. Even mm. when you, and today my, Psalm 121, who will not cause us to stumble? He's watching over us. Mm. He's holding us. He will not cause us to be harmed. It's such an amazing thing. It's such an amazing <laughs> thing, isn't it? Have seen. <laughs> yes. And yes. and 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 beyond that thing was this: whosoever will may come. As you talked about come. salvation, what 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 reflection exactly. does that hymn bring to you? Whosoever will may come. Yes. Whosoever will. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing. The Bible says in Revelations 3.20, it says that, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice 
and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person. Oh. Other versions say, I'll share a meal with that person. Oh. So you see Jesus standing at the door and knocking. And one, one um, expose I had was that this door doesn't seem to have a handle behind it where Jesus is standing. Oh. And so it is only the person inside, which is you and I, who can grant access to him. So we turn the handle and we allow him in. Oh. And he says, I'll come in and dine with you. Yeah. You know, he never takes away our will. If we will let him, we will have a wonderful meal with him. Oh. We'll have a wonderful fellowship with him. Life will be heaven for us here on earth. And so I'll encourage all. If you have not opened the door of your heart to Jesus, please do. Please do. Because there are amazing things in store for you here on earth and in heaven above. Okay, that was a, there's a line in that hymn Amen. that says, send the proclamation over veil and heal. Veil being exactly. valley and heal. Send that proclamation that yeah. whosoever will Amen. may come. Are there may people come. who are not mm -hmm. good enough for the gospel? What did you say? Are there people, are there who, people are who are not good enough for the gospel? Oh my goodness. No. There could never be not good enough for the gospel. Everyone, every single one, whosoever will. And that is God's love. That is God's love. It reaches out to everyone, irrespective of race, of culture, of gender, of where you've been before, of color, whosoever will mm. may come. Whosoever will. And I believe that for us who have experienced this love, he's made us ministers of reconciliation mm. to go out there and share the gospel. Mm. And that is what we fail to do. So so you just know, just, just hold that thought do. for a while. He said he's made us what? Ministers yeah. of reconciliation. Reconciliation. And, yes. and, 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 and that leads us, I guess, to the third hymn that says, Let brightly beams our Father's mercy. Let the lower lights be our burning. Send a gleam across burning. the way. Some poor fainting, the struggling way. seaman, mm -hmm. you may rescue. Some poor fainting, you may save. Charlie, continue. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And he says in Matthew chapter 5, he says that let your light so shine mm. that all men may see your good works. Give glory to the Father. And I believe that beyond even opening our mouths to share the gospel, mm. our very lives, our very life, going and coming, drinking water, eating fufu, bamboo, you know, talking, sharing, joking, gossiping, whatever. <laughs> Our lives are supposed to minister. Our lives are supposed to radiate the glory of God. Our lives are supposed to draw men and women and children to him. If we are walking, uh, there's one thing that I learned way back, that you may be the Jesus that somebody will see. That's it, that's it, that's it, earth. that's it. The you junior Jesus, no. And so as you move around, we are ministering. And so we should be cautious not to pretend, not to be holier than thou, but, you know, letting go of yourself, trusting fully in him and living as he gives. You draw men to mm. him, sharing his love. Beautiful. Amen. Beautiful. So, so Pastor Seth, you realize that when they say lower lights, it means there's a higher light. You say, let the lower lights mm -hmm. be burned. It means there's a higher light. And I know you work in, in GPHA, where I used to work for my national service. And there's, there's always that, um, what do you call it? Yes. That higher light called the what? Is it the, is it a watchtower? What, what do you call that? Yes. So the lighthouse. The lighthouse, you know? that's it. So there's that the lighthouse, lighthouse that... That that the, the 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 ship see from afar, 
and they come close. But you see, when they come close, they need Mm -hmm. the lower lights to guide them to dock. Mm -hmm. You see? So the lower lights must also burn so that some poor, fainting, struggling seaman who had seen Mm -hmm. the higher lights, you know, and had come close will not perish because some do perish mm. because they mm. might hit you know uh you know there are certain things within that part of the of, of the water body yeah. and without the lower lights they might just the water, yeah. hit uh some dregs or whatever it is and then that'll be it, that'll be it. Yeah. so we have that lower yeah. light we reflect the light of jesus and mm-hmm. unfortunately exactly The theme running through all the three hymns we just did is our part in the ministry of reconciliation. I find that some of us rather major in the ministry of uh, what? Dispersal. When the the Lord gathers, then we will scatter. You understand? We scatter scatter. scatter (laughs) by our lifestyles, by our examples, by our competitive spirit by Mm -hmm. our dissenting views, Mm -hmm. by our factionism, by our Mm -hmm. uh, uh, denominationalism, Mm -hmm. by all these things that we do, we repel people when we are rather supposed to guide them to shore where we are all headed. You know, so the higher light is, 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 is burning. Jesus is the light of the world. But we are also lights, lower light, so to speak, Mm -hmm. drawing people. Yeah. So we need to be burning so that they see our good works and give glory to God and come close to the Lord and want to know more about the Lord. But are our lights burning? Osofo, back to you. Are our lights burning enough? Oh, I'm sure we are trying. I wouldn't say that we are not doing anything. Mm -hmm. We are trying. I think there's much, much more we can do. Mm. Much, much more as children of God. The thing about scattering Mm. with our very words, Mm. with our very attitude, Mm. the same church, the Mm. same household, Mm. and yet we choose upon each of them. But this COVID-19 and the lockdown Mm. ministered, the Lord ministered greatly to me. He's sending us back. To the things that really matter. To the things that matter. Mm. We were so, so preoccupied with too many activities, Mm. fighting through, you know, scattering. Somebody said it's not so, we are not doing so winning. We are doing soul shifting. So one person moved from one church to the other. Soul shifting. And on and on. (laughs) Where we are supposed to bring them in. Mm. You know, God have mercy. God but have his mercy. His grace still abounds to us. Mm. His grace still abounds to us. And every aspect of our lives matter. Our very thought lives. Mm. Think on these things. Whatsoever is pure. Whatsoever has virtue. Whatever is true. Mm. It says that let your words be seasoned with salt. The salt. Ones that will build up ones that will encourage. Oh. It says that your conduct, your conduct should be one that will draw men to God. Whatsoever we do, do it in the name of Jesus. Do it as unto the Lord. So in our words, in our thoughts, in our deeds, God help us. God help us. God help us so that we can express this amazing unconditional love of god first corinthians 13 that love that forgives does not hold on to the past that love that does not keep a record of wrongs oh. that love that oh my goodness god help us god help us there's so much more we need to do and it begins from our very home some of us are experts at and what sharing the gospel or being lights outside our homes but inside mm. only god knows what happened only god knows so that was what 
the, the, the lockdown, many ministers, everybody, it's now here. Between you and God, and then the bond among family members. Mm. You know, then we send it out. Wow. Then we can send it out. God is counting on us. Trust him. He's counting on us. Yeah. Before we go Amen. to the climax of um, our, our, our broadcast today, I feel led to let you lead somebody to Christ. Somebody who has chanced upon this broadcast, you know, and is following and, and is, has heard us and the Holy Spirit has convicted in a way. If you want to say a word of prayer, you know, yeah. for anyone like that before we move to the, the final segment of today's broadcast. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. So if, if you are here with us, you listened to us, you are yet to listen. I believe that the Spirit of God has ministered strongly to you. And, and you are at that place of conviction. You have that place where you want to turn the door, the knob of the door open mm. for Jesus to come in and be Lord indeed mm. over your life. You have given your life to Christ several, several times, repeatedly, and you keep going back, backsliding, and you want to say, God, this is it. I'm coming. I just want you to close your eyes and share this prayer with me. The mm. Bible says in Romans chapter 9, verse 9 and 10, it says that, and Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says that if you will believe in your heart mm. that Jesus is the Son of God, mm. you know, that he died and rose again, if you will confess with your lips, it's about mm. believing in the heart, confessing with your lips that he is Lord indeed, then you will be born again. So I just want you to share this short prayer. Say yeah. it after me, believing in your heart. Mm and receiving of the free gifts of salvation. Shall we pray? Mm. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much that today, this morning, you have given me your word of life. You have given me your word that is light to my path, even in this dark world. Mm. Thank you that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross, yeah. to shed his blood, mm. to wash my sins away. Mm. I ask, oh God, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Mm. Forgive me of all my sins. Mm. Wash me mm. with your precious blood. Mm. And believe and be Lord, be Lord of my life. Mm. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Help me to live victoriously and in the end make it to spend eternity with you in heaven in jesus name we pray with thanksgiving amen amen and amen thank you so amen. much pastor seth and uh minister zuta just joined us welcome back minister zuta thank you Adani. okay so let me read something to both of you before we play that final hymn um, that's this from Wikipedia. The history of the hymn Stand Up for Jesus. Mm? In 1858, Presbyterian minister George Duffield Jr. was an associate of Dudley Atkins Sting, who had recently been removed. Zuta, listen to this part. Who had recently been removed from his local Episcopalian community for speaking against slavery. Did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> so he was serving with this minister who dared to speak against the injustice and the church removed him let me continue so Dufield I like this one. <laughs> <laughs> so Dufield assisted Reverend Ting who had been removed you know in supporting a revival of evangelicalism in Pennsylvania. So, well, not, not everybody who you see who has been sacked and stuff is a bad person, though. Sometimes we suffer for doing the right thing. But let me continue. In March 1858, Ting gave a sermon at a YMCA meeting of over 5,000 men on Exodus 10, 11. 
which says, Go now ye that are men and serve the Lord. Converting over a thousand men listening in the crowd. Look, I can pause here and tell you something. That if you preach and you have ten men, <laughs> ten men older than me, <laughs> respond to the gospel, Charlie, you are powerful. You know, Amen. thousand men listening in the crowd. They gave their life to Christ. And the following month, Singh was maimed in a farming accident. He hurt himself in the farm. Now, before Singh died, a few days after the accident, he told his father this, and I quote, Tell my brethren of the ministry, wherever you meet them, to stand up for Jesus. There's somebody who has done a great thing for the Lord, and then just within a month, suffered such a setback. And not a setback that he was going to even rise from. He was about dying. And yet he didn't tell them, you know, or communicate bitterness, you know, for serving the Lord and uh, Lord allowing such a thing to happen to him and the Lord not saving him from his deathbed. But he rather told his father that when you see my brothers, tell them, to stand up for Jesus. Duffield then wrote the hymn when he had went. So I, I take it that the father told Duffield that this is what your boss said on his dying bed that you should stand up for Jesus. And when Duffield then heard it, he wrote the hymn based on those words and also incorporated the phrase, Ye that are men now serve him from things memorable sermon the man before he died. So that ye that are men now serve him against all numbered foes. It was from that sermon that moved a thousand people to give their lives to Christ. And the stand up for Jesus was the parting words of a dying man. At the memorial service for Ting, Duffield gave a sermon based on Ephesians 6.14, which says, Stand firm, wearing the whole armor of God and ended it by reciting the new hymn he had written as a tribute. The hymn was first brought into public knowledge through leaflets printed by the superintendent of the local Christian school containing the words of the hymn. One of these leaflets ended up being published in a Baptist newspaper. And Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus was published in the Church Psalmist in 1859. Now listen to this twist getting to the end. After the first publication, the hymn was popular and was sung by both the Union and Confederate soldiers in the American Civil War. So it's like over here, I mean, there's no civil war, but just say MPP is doing a rally. They sing Stand Up for Jesus. NDC is doing a rally. They also sing Stand Up for Jesus, you know. And the hymn also became popular among British revivalists and within public schools in England. As a result of the images of Christian, but listen, as a result of the images of Christian militarism in the hymn, some also objected strongly to the hymn. And some people do not stand to sing it. When it's, when it's being um, sung, some people refuse to stand because they object to that whole concept of militarism in Christianity. And the hymn was excluded from a more politically correct volume of the Presbyterian Hymnal published in June 1990, just this June 1990, it was excluded not to offend handicapped people. You see how sensitive we've gotten in this world. They, they, they said when you say, stand up for Jesus, <laughs> you know, uh, you are offending. So the people who can't stand, you are offending them. And so in, in the name of political correctness, they've removed it from the hymn book. Oh, Charlie. Can you imagine? <laughs> the dying words, I mean, the, the, the last words of a dying man, tell my brothers to stand up for this. Let me, let me hear your reflections on this story and then we go for the hymn. Let's start with um, Eugene. After um, me, the mere mention of the uh, slavery issue, Grand Bono, that's it for me. And 
I, I, I want to say, it's like just like um, Jesus Christ died and then the kind of, well, before he left us, the things he said that go out into the world and be a witness unto me. I believe that that uh, word that he spoke before, uh, he was also dying, carried a lot of weight and brought about a change in the world. And so I, um, I identify so much with this. And my challenge also is with the standing up. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, yeah, I can hear you. All right. Um, it looks like the same, the truth can be offensive. Exactly. When we speak the truth, we can offend even the people who are supposed to stand with us. Mm -hmm. So whenever we believe that, I think the most important conviction we need to have is to have a conviction that we are actually being sent by God to do God's will, and then we should do it and not count the cost. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Looks like. Thank you. So, Stephanie, what do you have to say? Yeah. So, um, amazing song. One of my 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 favorite hymns. Um, it brings me immediately to um the scripture, Second Timothy two verse. That must endure hardship as a engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life some versions say with civilian affairs that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier amen 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 so yes standing up for jesus it just it just tells you the bit that is about the sensitivity i mean that for those who cannot stand is a challenge. I, I believe that it is even a matter of the heart more mm, than the physical. That's it. So you could be lying. This man was lying in his bed, but he was declaring that go stand up for Jesus. It's more about um, a position of the heart. I will speak the truth no matter what it costs me. I will declare the gospel of Christ. I will snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. I will snatch them out of fire. I will apply a sense of urgency mm. to this work that I'm doing. Mm. I will depopulate hell and increase heaven. You know, a sense of urgency. It is work that must be done. In the second Timothy scripture, just saying that, look, it comes with a cost. You don't entangle yourself in civilian affairs. You're a soldier of Christ. And so there are things that this physical body <laughs> will be attracted to the pleasures, the good times you should spend, you know, but some of them you must let go. You will speak the truth as Pastor, um, Minister Eugene said, and it will cost you. Carry your cross, deny yourself and follow him. We must stand for Jesus. We must stand for Jesus in this world where there's a lot of hypocrisy. In these last days where there are a lot of lies, a lot of pretenders, let us stand for Jesus. Let us speak. Let us not hide. Mm. Let us stick our necks out. Mm. Let us stick our necks out. Let us let the world know we are for Christ. A absolutely. Amen. I mean, and I'm, I'm feeling some fire in me right now. Eh? <laughs> Normally when we get to these, okay. this part, the climax, I get all fiery. Feeling some fire because mm. a number of us are afraid to go to church because politicians or mm -hmm. somebody is putting you know information out there hey you might get a virus so you might get a virus so and i'm like look if you are telling us to be careful protocols and stuff like that and we are not even being foolhardy and saying that oh we will not observe protocols as a church you know we say we'll observe protocols and then people are hey don't go if you go but meanwhile elections Elections that, that tend to, you know, uh, 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 elect some kinds of people who come and make our matter even worse off. You find people scrambling. I was seeing images at the door to be in line, be in queue. 
forgetting about anything social uh, distancing. You know, I'm not, I'm not blaming the authorities. I'm blaming the people, the people themselves, taking their own decision to, to endanger themselves to make sure that they can vote. Forgetting that there is something else bigger than this whole world and this world systems and all the things that we think are important. And if it's important to us, what are you willing to stand for? I find that we are not even ready to even die for the gospel. Like, we are not ready to die for the gospel. Meanwhile, the people who model the gospel, I mean, to us, at the peril of their lives. Those who were sent to Africa, they were told that there's malaria there. The malaria we know now, at that time it was like COVID-19. There was no vaccine. There was nothing. And when the white man, they call this place the white man's grave because when they come, they don't survive. And yet, year upon year, people were touched by the love of Jesus to bring the message of the gospel. They will report that, oh, this, this missionary died. Somebody else is willing to go. But us, we are so happy. We are rather sad that our concerts have been cancelled. We are rather sad that, you know, our conventions have been cancelled. We are rather sad that, you know, the, the essential things are not essential to us. Rather, the parties we have in church, I want to call it that way, the big, big things, you know, that people praise us for, those are the things we are crying about. And not the fellowship, the true fellowship. I think COVID-19 has rather, in a, in a reverse psychology, taught us what, what true fellowship is. How to care for each other, how to check on each other. How to ensure that people are well and able to even plug into the service. And all that. That fellowship that was missing, when everything was free-flowing, we are now realizing that people are important. You know, so stand up for Jesus. What are you willing to stand for? What are you willing to sacrifice your life for? If Jesus is truly your Lord and personal Savior, then stand up for Jesus. This was a words of a dying man who had just won a thousand souls for the Lord. I mean, what other reward can he get after winning a thousand souls for the Lord? Should he go and hurt himself and die? If it was today's Christian, they will, they will, they will doubt their faith. That God has even called them. But this man knew in, in whom he trusted. So on his dying bed, instead of being bitter, he said, tell my friends to stand up for Jesus. And as you, you watch this, this rendition that we did, you know, share with somebody and tell them, look, stand up for Jesus. Oh. The arm of flesh will fail you. The systems of this world will fail you. Political parties will fail you. You need to stand up for Jesus. Because Jesus never fails. If you're a soldier of the cross, stand up for Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm so much on fire. Let me just pause here and then allow the music to play. They will come and then we say our final bye-byes and we go. <laughs> Oh, 
Wow, 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 wow. I've been so blessed. <laughs> it was as if I was watching somebody else do the song. And uh, I'll go to Pastor Seth for a final word. You know, um, 
with everything that we've shared, her experience on the hub, and any final parting where she has, you know, for us before we, we, we close. So, Pastor Seth. All right. Thank you very much, Pastor Ni. It's been a wonderful time sharing with you, you know, and many others who have joined us, all these hymns. And I think that basically all that has run through all the hymns since the beginning till now is the fact that Jesus loves us. Mm. Jesus loves us. Mm. Jesus loves us. God loves us and he sent Jesus a son to come and die for us. He shed his blood on the cross of Calvary to set us free. Mm. And he's given us our wonderful friend, the Holy Spirit, to mm. help us live a victorious Christian life. He's given us the ministry of reconciliation mm. so that what we have experienced, this love, amazing love we have experienced, we can also go out there and draw, share with others and draw men to Christ. Snatch them in pity, as the hymn says, yes. from sin, from the grave, from mm. fire. Mm. There's a sense of agency that we need to attach to all of this business for Christ. And then eventually he says that we should stand up for Jesus. Mm. We should stand up for Jesus. We should stand up for Jesus. I think that it is a good place to end this whole conversation. Yeah. Stand up for Jesus. I was looking at this one verse that every time I'm singing ministers so powerfully to me. Mm. He says that stand up, stand up for Jesus. The trumpet call obey. Mm. Forth to the mighty conflict and this is glorious day. Mm. You that are men, those now. are the lines. Now. You that are men, now, now serve him. Yeah. Against unnumbered foes. Mm. Against unnumbered foes. Let courage rise with danger. Courage rise with danger. So oh. danger there to come. Foes, no, omu wa hobe But... Let courage, courage rise with danger. Oh, as a lion. Please hashtag Let it to courage, courage rise. rise with danger. Exactly. Let nothing, let nothing, nothing tell you. Let courage rise with danger and strength to strength. And you all. God bless you all, people of God. The Lord is with us. His grace abounds to us for all these assignments. Mm. He's good. See, let's deny ourselves. Let's carry our crosses. Let's follow Jesus. Let's proclaim to the world that we are children of God. Mm. And let them see mm, and experience this love that we are talking about, the unconditional love of the Father. God bless us all. God bless us all. And definitely, I trust that we together with many others will make it to heaven and spend eternity with our Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And God bless you. And thank you very much for spending this quality time with us. You know, even though you're on the front line and you are doing amazing stuff for the Lord, our, our, our cheers to your, your staff, you know, and, and all those who are with you, seven, seven, Mother Ghana and, and the kingdom, and, and, and your, your powerful apostle husband as well. And uh, should, should we be hearing from you pretty soon on, on, on your songs and music? Exactly. We are trusting God for amazing things to happen. Beautiful. It will definitely happen, whether COVID or no COVID. Charlie, courage rise with danger, pa. Amen. Amen. <laughs> let's, let's, let's go to, you know, our next part of music. When we come back, we'll continue our discussion. Enjoy this.
shall I or death shall I So welcome back to the Hymns Unlimited broadcast, The Harp with Atadni, and just gone by three powerful renditions, all talking about the man Jesus and his love. We, we began with amazing love, um, different languages, you know, and uh, I found a friend who's such a friend, and then Pastor Helen Yosem blessed us with how sweet the name of Jesus sounds. So if you're back here with me, um, I'm, I'm right here in the Virtue Studios, but joining me via Zoom is Pastor Helen Yosen and New Love Annan. So let me begin with you, New Love. 
You've heard these three hymns. What's the central theme that runs through for you as the hymns were being rendered? Okay. The central theme for me, uh, as you mentioned, was love. Was love. And uh, it had to do with our relationship with God or with Christ and how that's, uh, that's the, the health of that relationship should be tested. Mm. And should we know that it's a, it's a great relationship that exists between we and God. I particularly love the last hymn that, oh, I love all the hymns, but the one, the last one that Reverend Helen Yorson sang, it uses a lot of metaphors, mm. you know. Yeah. Um, the hymn uses a lot of metaphors. How sweet, uh, uh, how can the name of Jesus be sweet? I know mm. that the only thing that you can say is sweet is what you can put in your mouth. Mm. But uh, it says that it is sweet. And then it, it calls, it says, uh, my shepherd, my brother, mm. my friend, all those are different metaphors that uh, the hymnist is trying to use to help us uh, to test our relationship and its health status with God. Mm. So uh, it has to do with relationship. It doesn't end that. Like, it has to do with our relationship with God. And if it is healthy, then we will have to experience all of these things that the, yeah. uh, the hymn writers are witnessing to. So that for me, that is the central thing that ran through yeah. these hymns that we just heard. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Pastor Helen, mm -hmm. is that the same for you? Yes. <laughs> I, yeah, I believe, well, I, the, the, I think the love of God permeates, as, as uh, um, Neil have said, the, the love of God permeates all of this. And I was really also, as you said, he's talking about different aspects of it. Talking about our relationships, our relationship with God. And um, I noticed, I, I, I checked the, you know, the house with the name of Jesus sound. Obviously, that particular song, when it was written by um, Isaac Newton? Newton. John yes. Newton. John, yeah. Newton. John, John Newton. John Newton. John Newton, rather. Um, he, the, the scripture for that was taken from the songs of, uh, the songs of Solomon. Songs of Solomon 1, 3. The first segment of it, we talks about uh, the fragrance or the ointment of your name. Your name is like ointment. Mm. Your name is like ointment pours forth. So hence, I suppose, maybe the sweetness of the fragrance. But there's something that the name of Jesus Christ does for us. When we hear that name, it's like smelling a sweet fragrance. It mm. permeates every part of our lives and satisfies us. Um, so it says that how sweet the name of Jesus sounds in that believer's ear. So, but all of them, I noticed the amazing love he's talking about, a love is, is, is getting us to actually even think that how could he have died for me? How could it be that the Savior, the one who owns the entire universe, mm. would die for me? And I think that um, in when we look at Romans, I think it's Roman, uh, Romans 5, 8, it says, but God shows and clearly proves his own love for us by the fact that while we were still sinners, mm. Christ died for us. So it's an amazing love because it's for, for the human mind. How do I comprehend a love that looks at me in my mess, looks at me while I'm still swearing and cursing God and dies for me? So um, it's it, it, the theme of the whole thing is the love of God. And I suppose the how sweet the name of Jesus sounds really is like a response it's almost like a response to the love that mm. how could this uh, uh, this is this is what that love has done for me he's now mm. become my brother he's my priest mm. he's my friend mm. he's now he, when i hear the name it suits my soul it heals my it heals me. it's it's a it's a place it's a it, it talks about the father no the, the there's a it's a it's a it comes a troubled breast so for me now this is the believer is now speaking about that love after they have received that love this is what i'm feeling but obviously, the amazing love obviously is like at the point of me receiving this love. Oh my God, why mm. did Jesus Christ die for me? Look at my life. It paints the picture. Look at it, paints the picture of who Jesus is compared to who we are. So it's uh, it's it's love, really. It's the love of God. So the mm. believer is also responding with their love. But God's love first. And look at this love. How could it be that he would, he would, he would. Um, he will literally spend that kind of love on me. I'm, I'm nothing but the king of glory decided to spend his love on me. And I therefore respond with that that name. Now that I know the name, oh, that name is sweet. And it's the one that what Ben Essel was singing, the, he talks about a friend. You know, the Bible talks about a friend that sticks closer than a brother. So, mm. 
Um, okay, let me not talk too much. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's flowing like milk. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, the beautiful hymns, as like I said, they, these hymns are, you know, you can sit with a hymn and just, it's a message, you know, just sit with one hymn and there's a message for the day. Honestly, there's a one message. The themes are so strong and the, the hymn writers wrote them with such focus on scriptures and through um, true uh, theology, they study God, they wrote them so that when anybody can pick it up and you know what the Christian book is about just by reading a hymn. I should be doing. I should be doing this. Not to cut you. I should be doing this with. with but as you know, as you speak, both of you speak. I just get images. <laughs> I just get <laughs> images in my mind. You know. Okay. You know. Um. I. I once sat at, at the feet of a missionary. He's called Doctor Solomon Aite, and he made such. Okay. A, a, yes, a, a profound statement. He said, "You know." We talk about the prodigal son, prodigal son, prodigal son. The son wasn't prodigal. And you know, I, I'm, I'm not a master of the English language. I was like, hmm, what's he on to? He said, look, it's the father who was prodigal. The father had so much love to, in fact, waste on such a son. Mm. And I'm like, Whoo, I, ne I never thought of it that way. He said, look, it's he showed how prodigal his love is. Like you don't deserve it. Ah, I get it. You get it now. <laughs> you don't yeah. deserve it. I mean, you took away half, you know, of his possession whilst he was still alive. I like wishing him dead. You went wasted it. You came back, and and he he gave you. He said, "Like put a ring on his finger, kill the fatted calf." And let's have a banquet because my son was lost and now he's found. Mm. You know, wonderful yes. love yes. streams from the heart of the father. You know, as kids, we used to think of God the father as, you know, uh, like a strict disciplinarian, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But the second imagery I have is about the John 3.16 that we all love to recite. Yes. You know, and then I heard this time it was, um, if I'm right, it will be the legendary evangelist, um, Graham. Billy Graham said that God so loved the world, mm -hmm. not the church. Right. <laughs> God so loved the world that he gave. And he stressed that not mm. the church. Because we can get to that point where we feel that, no, 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 no. The, the love is for the church. But he loved the oh, world <laughs> that he gave. I mean, look at this world that has turned against the Lord, doing all these, you know, parades and doing all these funny things. And God still loves the world so much that he will send you and I to them to still win some over. What a love. You know, let me also pause here, you know, and then hear what you have to say about this, these two scenarios have yes. painted. Yes, and it's true. I mean, it's, uh, I also got images as, as you were speaking. You know, it's, it's difficult to use, <clears throat> excuse me, to use human words to describe the love of God. Yeah. Mm. Very, very difficult to use human words to describe the love of God because it is very deep. God loves us so much. And uh, whilst we are talking about uh, God, rather the father rather being prodigal and, you know, spending so much love on, on the child who had done something wrong, rather, I, I was thinking about how big God loves. And that's what music becomes very, very important because sometimes it's very difficult for us to use human words to talk about the love of God. But when uh -huh. music comes in, it opens you up so that the words find more you know, higher meaning than uh, they would have if uh, they were just spoken as mere words. So um, we also uh, thank you for being used by the Holy Spirit to select such hymns. I, I was just thinking about how you chose those hymns that fit into that segment. You know, I found a friend who's such a friend. Mm. And then also how sweet the name of Jesus sound. 
And come, let us sing of a wonderful love. Yep. I've mm. been all talking about the love of God and our relationship uh, that must be uh, between we and God. So uh, the love of God is, 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 is just big. You can't just think or talk about it with human words. So music becomes very important when we are expressing love to God because it lifts us up, it lifts the words up, it gives it more meaning. Uh, yeah. And we are able to express ourselves better. Um, when, when we sing the words instead of speak the words. Powerful. Pastor Helen. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> I think I mean, there's not really <laughs> much to say, but uh, I mean, God is, it's, it's, I mean, I think New Love said something about the fact that, you know, um, that we don't really have words to describe. Mm -hmm. um, even as musicians, sometimes we, we, you're trying to describe something, but it's like, uh, you know, sometimes you might feel it, but you're trying to describe it, but it's, it's difficult to describe um, what God does, what God has done for us. Um, but it's, uh, it, the, the Bible calls it an extravagant, it says, what an extravagant love. Mm -hmm. I think it's in the book of First John 3. It was about an extravagant love that God has given us, has bestowed upon us, and that we should be called the, uh, we should be called the children of God. What a love that he's bestowed upon us. Mm. And um, I think every time I listen to, to the, to, to those hymns, it just, um, it really humbles me, humbles us to think that the God of all the earth would, would uh, look at us and even while we are yet not following him, like you said, the prodigal son, I mean, that what, that what you said there, it clicked when you said it and I, I, a song came to mind, actually. <laughs> a song actually came to mind. It's okay. not a hymn. It talks about the reckless love of God. Mm -hmm. There's a, uh, mm. And there's a new song. It's, it's about yeah. a year or two old. Because, and I know that song had a lot of a lot of people argued with the word reckless. The songwriter used <laughs> because he did, he said reckless, and people said, "Oh, God is not reckless." But what he really meant, what what you're saying, the body was like, "No, God, we ab abandoned, we abandoned." He just ab threw his love, throws his love on us. He doesn't think, "Okay, well, she looks like she qualifies. He looks okay. Let him clean himself." But no. That's why I talk. That's why that came about. Amazing! It's amazing. It's amazing. It's all inspiring. When you look at it, you stand there and your mouth is open. Like God, do you know what you're doing? Why are you doing that? He, he doesn't deserve it, but God says no. My love is for <laughs> everyone. I'm pouring it out, mm. and it's like you know, some of us are like, no, God, hold it back to me. So that's why when we, when you sing that song, you, you know that it's a it's an only God's amazing love mm. that can be poured out on a world mm. that is that is not chasing after him mm. so um so yes it's, it's a reckless abandon that god is that god works with when he pours out his love on us and and then we are then to respond with that worship that lord my my life my way my end everything belongs Accept. to you nothing yeah all right. It normally, when it gets to this part, then I realize that we have five or so minutes more. Then I get angry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because um, 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 as you are speaking again, it's, 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 it's so easy when you become a believer now to now yeah. play that big brother and say, why do you waste your love on this son? Yeah. He doesn't deserve it. When I was in secondary school, there was this song that if you sang the SU president will, 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 will be very mad at you. It was a song by Al Green, Reverend Al Green. And yeah. he said, love is the message and the message is love. From the sea to the mountains to the heavens above. Tell everybody what uh, you, you know. He released that song. And it was a big issue because they were playing that song at entertainment night. <laughs> and those who were not believers could jump to the song like, no, this is a worldly song. No, the man has fallen and all that. And it took me, you know, growing up in the law somewhere in the university to realize that there's one message the world cannot reject. It's a message of love. It is. They cannot reject love. There's no way they'll reject love. And that is what Jesus Christ demonstrated openly, shamefully on the cross. 
that he could do that mm. in our place. You yes. know, I should rather say shamelessly, yeah. not shamefully. <laughs> you know, <Shamelessly>. on, <laughs> on the cross, like open. But it, it's, we, we, we find comfort sometimes as believers in rather, you know, it's only sweet in the believers here, forgetting that, you know, when, while we're yet sinners, and then the imagery that you painted, Pastor Helen, whilst he was afar off, whilst the prodigal son was afar off, wow. the father saw yes. him and he rushed out to embrace him. Yes. And so the essence of what we are discussing today is that love, that almost reckless love, you know. When some people come to faith, we are like, mm, not this one. I don't believe it. No, no, not this one. Not Yeah. <laughs> let me let me hear your final words unfortunately we we have to at this point we just have to oh wow <laughs> but you know um, the final song i'll share is a favorite from new lavanan your grace and mercy so in your final words if you oh, have wow. anything to say Ooh, about your grace and mercy you can you can say it and then when you are done i'll play a rendition done by reverend benesel and one of my daughters um, what's her name again? Gifty. Yes. Gifty uh, did a powerful duet with Reverend Benesso. So let me hear your final words and you can touch on your grace and mercy. So Pastor Helen, let's okay. start with you maybe. So, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were going to get... <laughs> new love okay, new oh, love. New love. You want, you are, you're on to something. Let's, let's have you. No. Yes. Oh, no. let, let Pastor Helen start. <laughs> no, I... I, I, I... Oh. Uh, it's good to get impression from someone rather than speak about something yourself. So. Um, let me see your, let me see your grace. Okay, I don't know all the, but the, I mean, uh, the, the chorus. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh Lord. Every, I mean, every time I sing it, I'm just, I'm just your grace, your grace and mercy is all that I need. Mm. Uh, uh, your grace and for because uh, um, I'm trying to remember the first, the second, um, your grace and mercy. You never give the promise. Yes, that the world will be easy, but um, <laughs> yes. So, so sometimes we, you know, there's the things that whereby we think that um, um, there's life happening all around us, and Lord, how do we get through all of this? And I think the song really reminds us that you know, in all, in every situation of life, if we can depend just on God's grace and God's mercy. They are enough. They mm. are just enough mm. for every trial and every situation that we that we will go through. Because uh, sometimes we kind of think, okay, why is this happening to me? Why is that happening to me? But God has promised, and the road was not going to be easy. But we know that the grace and the grace of God is, as the Bible says, He said to Paul, "My grace is sufficient." And we know that His mercy is everlasting. His mercy never fails. So we can do these two things; they never fail. We mm. can trust in them. Mm. Okay, let me stop there. I want yeah, you know, you, you, Nula, before you come in, can you can you yes. briefly touch on why you 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 conjoined grace and mercy? Uh, okay. Yes. <laughs> I conjo- I conjoined them and I also I also used a singular and said your grace and mercy has yes. instead of half yes. Grace. Yes. Because I treated them like yes. Siamese, Siamese twins. Siamese twins. <laughs> yes, so they become one. You know, they they, they go they go together. Yes. Mm. So uh, the, uh, I also use different languages, me, because as a Methodist, you, you know that we we also believe that if we had thousand tongues, we would have used all the tongues to praise God at the same time. That's it. So uh, sometimes I wish we could um, use so many languages to write a song but uh, sometimes i don't want to go too much into my personal life to dilute how other people think about their song and all that but pastor helen has said it all life was not promised to be easy uh, you know my sister my eldest sister harriet she's the most beautiful person i know she's the most kind-hearted you know motherly and all of that she was born in 1965 mm. with polio so I mean, she, mm. she doesn't tell you, you know, but she has one of one of her legs, you know, and slightly smaller than the other one. Mm. And when it is cold, you know, she's in pain because uh, of that kind of thing. 
but you know she's the one who has done the most in our whole family she ha she has about three houses in Accra now she lives in the United States as we speak mm. and sometimes me when I visit her and see her pull herself into the car early in the morning in Massachusetts you know how cold mm. it is in in, in Nancy. and she's going to work early in the morning she's driving you know and then she goes to work and then she comes home and all all the she takes care of even those of us who, who have two strong feet walking up and down mm. you know so sometimes i watch i say life was not promised to be easy but his grace and mercy mm. you know will bring us through so <laughs> I, I know that people are going through uh, different kinds of things but those who look up to god i know will come out uh victoriously so uh, these are the things that inspire me to write such songs powerful powerful so the main thing for today has been love grace and mercy and um, pastor helen um if if you can spare a prayer for any sinner who is just passing through you know this broadcast now or later you know you can share a prayer with hmm. with him or her i believe that those who feel they don't deserve the love of God after watching this broadcast would realize that they were the reason why he came. And, yes. and, and that love yes. is still available. The grace and mercy is still available. Yes. You know, so we can share that word Amen. of prayer. Then we'll, we'll play the final rendition and then we'll call it, you know, the end of today's broadcast. Okay. All right. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Mm. I pray for every single person who is watching and for those who are yet going to watch this later on. I pray that you will reveal yourself to them, O oh God. I pray that your love will be evident to them. And even in the midst of what we are all going through all over the world, a pandemic, I pray that, Lord, Lord your, let your love reach through. Let your love shine through all the darkness of all the, the grief and all the things that are going on in our midst, in mm. our cities and in our nation, oh God. Mm. We ask your love will reach out and touch that young man, that young woman, that husband, that wife. Lord, we are, above all we are praying, reach out and touch somebody, Lord. Let your abundant grace be manifest in the lives of your people and in the man who does not even know you, Father. Reveal yourself today, Father. As they watch these things, as they watch us talk about this, Father, I pray that you will reveal yourself to every man, every woman, every boy and girl who is listening, oh God, Father. We thank you and we bless you, Father, for your love that never fails, for your love that is true. Let it be revealed to us more and more each day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And um, I'll do my final thank yous, and then I'll give Reverend Lavanan the opportunity to introduce his own song, and then we will just play it, and then we are done. So I want to say thank you first to my guests, Reverend Yulavan and Pastor Helen Yorsen, for taking time off their busy schedule to be with us this morning and sharing their heart with us. I, I have no iota of doubt that, I mean, a lot of lives have been blessed. I've been watching the Facebook comments. It's so amazing. It's been a blessing. I want to thank my technical team for... The, the sacrifice they put in, you know, every Friday to make this happen. It's, it's just been by the grace of God. God bless you all, guys. And uh, everyone who is a loyalist to this broadcast, uh, there are some who are always waiting, you know, and they, they, they even do their own watch. What, uh, what do you call that thing? The watch what? Watch party. Watch party, yes, the watch party. They, they do their watch party and get people joining and all that god bless you all and we love you all keep watching the hub and keep sharing the love of jesus with the world hallelujah so reverend you love introduce your song and then we go so the next song that we are about to hear is called adumni ehumobro mm. uh, others call it your grace and mercy because it was written in three languages that uh, i think i speak English, Akan, Ochi, and then Ga. Uh, it's on the theme of grace and mercy. Uh, mercy, which is the compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm, mm. but they decide not to do it. Uh, 
and then grace, which is a free and unmerited favor of God as manifested in the salvation of sinners and the bestowing of blessing. So the song that you are about to hear is Adom Ne'ehumobro, Your Grace and Mercy. Thank you.
Well, 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 that was a special combo edition indeed. I've been so blessed and I can tell from your engagements on, 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 the, on the broadcast that you've also been so, 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 so blessed. Make sure you tag many more who couldn't get on this particular broadcast. And guess what? Next week, we'll give you another version of the special combo edition. Until then, keep up the spirit encourage one another keep safe and see you next week on the special combo edition of the hub cheers i love you bye